Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. Now, when people come to Germany, and especially when they come to Berlin, one thing that they hope to find is cabaret, which has a long tradition here in the country. Now, one person they might turn to is our guest today, one of Germany's most accomplished and acid-tongued political cabaret artists and satirists. And here he is, Martin Buchholz. Hello. Thank you very much for joining us today on Talking Germany. Martin Buchholz, first things first. Uh, as I understand it, cabaret is a French word and a French invention. But you Germans have something called cabaret. It's political cabaret, it's something different, isn't it? Well, the word cabaret describes a certain kind of entertainment, dancing and the like, whereas revue and cabaret are very specific German forms. The discussions are very German in nature. We go for the jugular. So it's very serious stuff, yeah? Are you, what's the tradition? Are you in a tradition? Who do you look back to? There are plenty of German cabaret artists. Some viewers may have heard of Werner Fink and Wolfgang Neuss, for example. To call them role models is perhaps taking it too far, but they certainly impressed me back then. Wolfgang Neuss, a great man. That's a, um, let, let me ask you this. When, you, when you're actually sort of thinking up your programmes, what makes you more creative? Does it, is it things that make you laugh, that you find funny, or things that make you angry? That depends. Let's take the time when asylum seekers' hostels were being burned down in Germany. And I reacted to it in a macabre fashion by making a pun on a word that means both glow and pseudo in German. You can't really translate that into English. But suffice it to say, I get really creative in those kinds of situations. If you're going to counter apathy and stupidity, then you're going to need a fresh new language of your own. Interesting. Now, we've got a taste there of, the, of almost the, the anger, the wrath of Martin Buchholz. Well, Martin Buchholz, you might live in East Germany now, but you actually grew up in West Berlin in the immediate post-war years. You have a strong sense in your cabaret of what is absurd and what is ridiculous. Is that perhaps linked to the fact that you grew up in an absurd city, a city with a wall right down the middle? If you grow up in an absurd situation, you don't notice it yourself. The absurdity of it is actually what makes it normal. I grew up in the French sector, although the Nazis were still in power when I was actually born. This division of Berlin was always so fascinating for this reason, because it didn't just divide East and West, but old and young too. The atmosphere is always tense, troubled and also sometimes critical. It provokes thought, discord. So it was no coincidence that the 68 movement took hold here. The student movement, although it wasn't just students. I wasn't one. And yes, I think this atmosphere is highly conducive to individual creativity. You became a, a journalist before you became a cabaret artist. Is there a connection between the two? Is there a line between the two? They're both exhibitionist professions. There's not a great deal of difference between the two, in my view, because for me, political cabaret is the continuation of journalism by another means, with the great advantage that I'm my own editor-in-chief on the stage, and no one can try to change my mind about something. But you glean an instant public reaction. If you're a print journalist or someone who appears on television, you don't get that direct response from your audience. And you have no control over whatever might be going on at the moment, whether they're taking a pee or something. 
So in that respect, mine's a highly luxurious profession. Okay, you, you, you talked about the fact that you grew up in the immediate post-war period. Mm. That was a period where there wasn't very much to laugh about and there wasn't very much comedy in Germany. Uh, do, is, it, is it true to say that the Nazis for a while killed comedy in Germany and it had to be reinvented? I was a bit too young to really register it at the time. There were entertainment shows like that back then, just like those on English television. They were conservative, not comedy shows like they are today, with the promise of dirty jokes to get people to tune in. I was fascinated to see a fat guy standing on stage telling jokes, and I thought, I'd like to do that one day. <laughs> there wasn't much satire, though, was there? No, no, just down-to-earth German humor. <laughs> Martin Buchholz, uh, the, the, the impression you get from that report is that the politicians are trying to be big personalities. Mm -hmm. You, as a cabaretist, what do you prefer? Do you prefer boring politicians or politicians that are big personalities? Uh, Which of them does have a big personality? That's the question. Most of them are just totally dull. And that makes it all the more difficult to have a satirical go at them, to counter the boredom, the repetitive clichés, the fact that they're not actually saying anything, to counter the omnipresent nothingness. Is, uh, is Chancellor Merkel boring? Politics is boring, yes. Is Chancellor Merkel boring? Merkel herself. I don't even know the woman. Well, I'm having a relationship with her, but it's not working out very well because she's always pretending she doesn't know me. And that's why I don't want to talk about my personal predilections here. Do you have a... What about, what about Guido Westerwelle? Her, uh, her foreign minister. In Germany, he's been made into a, a gigantic figure of fun. Maybe by you, I don't know. Is, is, that, is that fair? Well, Guido Vestavella was in the audience one evening during my last show, and he marched out after a quarter of an hour, slamming the door behind him. I was quite ashamed it took him that long. Is this, is this true? Guido, Guido was in the show, and he left after a quarter of an hour. And was it as a result of what you'd been... Well, I'd been talking about the undead in politics. I said that there are zombies that have long started to decompose and who get permission to leave the cemetery now and then. And then I said the skull gets a bit of a spruce up and is presented to us in the form of Vestavella. Tell me this, you're an insider. Why are German satirists, why are German political commentators kinder to Angela Merkel and less kind to Guido Westerwelle? I don't think that applies to me. I share up my malevolence equally between them. There were people who said, what's your problem with Angela Merkel? So I turned that into an extra sketch in the show about my inability to communicate with her. Angela Merkel, of course, comes from East Germany. Is Germany a divided country? Are there Aussies from the East and Vessies from the West? Mm -hmm. Yeah? No doubt about it for you. The divide is still evident even 20 years after the fall of the wall. I recently took a taxi to the theatre in the East, and the driver told me a joke. He said to me, do you know this one? The fox is clever, but pretends to be stupid. With the Vessi, it's the other way around. Well, needless to say, he didn't get a tip. But you do notice the awkwardness is still there. In both the East and the West, and in the prejudices themselves. And it's mostly evident when each group is left to its own devices. OK, let's talk. We're going to talk about this in depth in just a second. Martin Buchholz, what do you make of that story? You can't top it. OK, we really do have two Germanic tribes. Homo germanicus, non-sapiens, it's called. Different species, yeah? The lady was right. <laughs> but to make a separate ethnic group of it, well, that's... Homo Germanicus Orientalis and Homo Germanicus Occidentalis. Yes, Aussie and Vesi. 
Ich meine, what, yeah. are the, what are the characteristics of these two different species? Well, the Aussies say the Vessies are arrogant, and the Vessies say the Aussies are daft. Neither has anything to do with characteristics, but rather to do with dumbness. You were, you were born in Berlin, as we've heard. You live now deep in the East, as it were. Yeah? Are we making any progress? Are we bringing these two sides together in any way? I think with the younger people, the lines are gradually becoming more blurred. Where I live, in the Atz Mountains, that's deep in the east, you could even call it the Middle East, or Far East even, you notice that there are youngsters who are not finding any work and going to the West, where I think a quite different assimilation is taking place. But the taxi driver I came with today talked about when Erich was in charge, referring to Erich Honecker. And it reminded me of the time when my mother used to talk about when Adolf was in charge, after the war. Well, as far as the older generation goes, it'll sort itself out biologically in the end. And as for the youngsters, I really hope that the whole business is well and truly laid to rest at some point. Let's talk about you. I'd like to use an English word. I, uh, the, the word I'd like to use is cruel, grausam in German. Mm -hmm. Do you have to be, to be a cabaret artist like yourself, do you have to be cruel to people? Well, you certainly can't be soft. After all, it is an attack, and a biting wit or biting sarcasm also has to be cruel to a certain degree. But I would definitely say I have a certain sadomasochistic tendency. <laughs> but, listen, but listen, you've got a little wee bit older, you're moving into the wise phase of life. Uh, pe people, you know, when they get, let's say, beyond 50, become a little bit kinder very often. Have you become become crueler or kinder? I've only just come out of puberty. <laughs> I still squeeze my pimples. I'll be 120 years old before I start getting wise. I think so, 120 vielleicht. Okay, okay. Well, well, Martin Buchholz, Germans love rules. Is that an assertion? I thought rules were actually measuring sticks. <laughs> Good one. Uh, Germans are very efficient. Uh, okay. Well, if I'm German, and I think I am, that depends on the time of day. German men love their cars more than their wives. I don't drive. <laughs> I also don't drive my wife. But sometimes we drive together. Germans make the worst music in the world. Well, my friend Beethoven wasn't half bad. Okay, he might not like everything he does. Let's talk about two things that are very serious for you. Mark Twain said that German is an awful language, famously. The language is your most important tool. What's your answer to that then? I've actually read that book by Mark Twain about the German language. It's very amusing. And he's right. It must be awful for foreigners, because before you've even realized that the sentence has ended, you've missed out on so many subsidiary bits of information, just as in this sentence I'm uttering right now. I mean, it must be impossible to work out what this guy is talking about. It's a true test of patience for anyone learning German. And the big one, Martin Buchholz, Germans don't have a sense of humor. Luckily, whenever I perform my show, I usually have a qualified minority in the audience. And if they can put up with me, then they must have a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And when you look at when you look at yourself, yeah, after all these years, on the on the, uh, I, I was asking you about how you judge other people. Mm -hmm. When you look at yourself now, when you see yourself on stage, are you now kinder in your judgment about yourself after all these years? Mm. No. I'm usually impatient and displeased with myself because I know I could sometimes do things better, especially if I watch myself on television. My profession is all about criticism, so as far as self-criticism goes, I certainly don't spare myself. Mm. 
I've written, it sounds like the tortured Martin Buchholz, doesn't it? I've written a blog on the tortured Martin Buchholz. You'll find it on the Talking Germany website alongside sketches of a whole load of other fascinating people who've been on the show. If you're into Talking Germany, you can find out more on the internet. Your host, Peter Craven, is keeping a blog on the many shows and guests in the series. Find out more about what happens behind the scenes, gossip, experiences, how the whole show is put together. Just visit blog.dw-world.de slash Talking Germany. And you can tell us what you think about the program there, too. Martin Buchholz, the quiz, quick version. Wit or wisdom? Wit. Tears or laughter? Oh, laughter. Are you a Vessi or an Aussie? An um, Bossi. <laughs> Is Germany a fun country or a funny country? A funny country. Mm, well, it's a curious, uh, strange country, in that sense, funny. In diesem Sinn, funny. And on that note, that's been Martin Buchholz. If you've enjoyed his company as much as I have, come back next week. Tschüss. <laughs>